Hey, it's Denise. Um, I know I just recently did my video giving you the big news that I'm going to be getting a puppy and I wanted to share some of what I'm becoming a crazy, you know, like a pregnant lady, especially with your first baby. My Jay, my dog, is 15 years old, so it's been a long time since I've had a puppy. Um, so I'm doing the whole like nesting thing like you do before you have a baby. If you want to, and I say this because to me it's important, and I know to a lot of people it's important, most of the dogs I had over the course of my life were rescues. They either came from a shelter or sort of word of mouth of knowing that someone had a dog that needed a home. Um, but in the video where I sort of announce, hey, I'm getting a puppy, which I will link to this video, just in case you didn't watch it, I do explain why in this particular instance I decided to go with a breeder because of the specific reason that I'm getting this puppy. Again, I will link that so, you know, because that is important to me and I think whenever you have the opportunity and it's the right time and you can help get a rescue dog, I think that is the way to go. Anyway, I just want to tell you some things that I have already gotten for the puppy, even though, now right now we're looking at her name probably being Persephone, and we'll be calling her Percy. My son and I talked about it a little bit. Persephone was the first name that came to me. Then in my mind I went back and forth a bunch of other names. Calypso, Athena, kind of stuck on the Greek goddess, you know, names. Uh, then I thought Sabrina. I like that name, and apparently the translation is princess. Um, I threw a bunch of names out there. Patrick instantly was like, because at first I thought with Persephone, maybe we would call her Penny. And I said, or, or I guess Percy. And he was like, I love Percy as a name. And I was like, all right, it's going to be a female dog. And I don't personally know any Percys. And the only two fictional Percys that I can think of off the top of my head are Percy Jackson from that series of books. And Percy Weasley from the Harry Potter books. Both of, both of whom are boys. But do I really care? No. Is a dog going to care in the least? Absolutely not. So we're probably going with her registered name being Persephone, but we'll probably call her Percy. So I've still got a while to wait, but I'm so excited it's practically nauseating. The litter of puppies is due at the end of November. It is, what is it? It is October 24th as I'm filming this. Uh, I'm in my PJs. Well, nightgown, I should say. It's evening. I took a bath, and I was like, do I have to put real clothes on to make the video? Nah, they'll forgive me for putting my nightgown on, because I'm not going to be up much longer. Um, anyway, the litter of puppies is due at the end of November. I have first choice of females. I decided to go with a female because... My Jay, my, my Beagle, is 15 years old, and he would not be happy with a male dog being brought in at this point in his life. Uh, he may not be happy with a female dog. So I am totally, you know, realistically setting up to divide my house that Jay has downstairs and Percy would have upstairs. Because... These are Jay's golden years, and I'm not stressing him out. If he doesn't think it's fun to spend time with the puppy, then I'm not going to stress him out with it. I'm hoping with it being a female puppy that he'll find her more interesting and not threatening. And hopefully that'll be the case. But if it makes him nervous or uncomfortable, then I will keep them separate. Anyway, um, that is just something you have to be considerate of when you're bringing a puppy into a house with a senior citizen dog. And I'm knocking stuff over. Okay, uh, what have I already purchased? Two things that are large that I do not have here. Um, things that you have to have. Well, I believe you have to have if you want to have any sanity and to keep your puppy safe. Their crate that they're going to sleep in. And some sort of playpen type system. You know, usually consists of panels that clip together that you can either make 
most of them can be flexible like you can make it round or you can kind of line it up like a like a long straight rectangle coming off the crate somewhere that the puppy when it comes out of the crate can walk around a little bit um, but it's still not loose where it's going to get into anything unsafe or go somewhere unsupervised uh, very important that you keep your puppy very closely supervised while it's young for its safety and also to help its training go along faster. The fewer mistakes you let it make uh, because you're not watching it, the faster it will learn what behavior you want it to do and the faster it'll do it. So both for safety and sanity, it's important uh, to have a crate, have your dog learn to love the crate. The crate isn't punishment. The crate isn't something you get shoved into only when it, you're going to be left alone. The crate should be like their little den, their little cave. It should be where they want to hang out. They should associate it with treats and sometimes favorite toys or maybe even feed them their meals in there at the beginning. So they associate the crate as somewhere fun to be. Um, and you sitting on the floor in the playpen, hanging out next to the crate, also makes it a fun place to be. So, well, I'm going to have to totally remodel the, uh, I should say, re, re uh, not remodel, reorganize the upstairs of my house, including my bedroom, which I'm going to have to empty half the stuff out of and move my bed over so that I have room for her crate and playpen next to my bed, uh, at least probably for the first month or so. I want her to be feeling safe and comfortable and confident sleeping in the crate. Knowing that I'm right here will help her with that. And then as she gets a little older and a little bolder, we'll gradually move the crate, uh, you know, closer to the door, then into the hall, then maybe into the room across the hall, eventually being the goal that her crate and playpen area can be in what will then be no longer my guest room, but basically my puppy play slash training room. So I did get a crate that has the divider. Um, I got a large crate with a divider and with a with two doors. So it has a door on the end and a door on the side. That also gives you more flexibility with setting it up because you're going to attach your playpen to your crate. And depending on where you are, like is it going to be in a corner? Is it going to be against the wall? Is it going to having the options of doors, you know, two doors instead of one, is great. And also if you travel, maybe when you go to stay at someone else's house or stay at a hotel where you're having room to set up for your dog isn't necessarily the same as where you set it up at home. So it's good to have the flexibility of being able to attach the playpen area to the crate in different ways. Also the divider is just because I didn't want to buy a second crate as she gets bigger. Um, she's a standard poodle. So there's going to be a large dog eventually, but you want to start off with a crate that isn't too spacious because if there's a lot of room in the crate, more than basically for the dog to lie down comfortably, they should be able to stand up, turn around, and lie down comfortably in their crate. If there's a lot more room than that, they're going to designate, okay, I sleep on this side and I use this side as a bathroom. That's what you don't want to happen. You want them to absolutely not think it's okay to have an accident in the crate. Um, so once she's housebroken and that's not an issue, then the divider comes out and she has the whole crate as her space. But in the beginning, while she's still real little and we're working on, on potty training, the divider stays in. Okay. Now, my breeder that she will be coming from trains her dogs to use a litter box. That's what this gray boxes. You can see here in the front, it's the little cutout so that this front wall is a little bit shorter to make it easier for the puppy to step in and out. You don't use uh, like the dusty cat litter. You use what is similar to the type of litter that some barns use for horses. It's basically wood pellets uh, with, they don't put chemicals or anything in it. It's just little pine pellets which are very absorbent. And they're not as tempting for a pup, puppy to pick up. I've seen too many people say that their puppy just take, picks up the puppy training pads and treats them like a toy. They shake them around and they chew on them. And then obviously 
they're not staying on the floor where they can be used appropriately as a uh, training, you know, potty training uh, aid. So using this and the litter, the litter is just not as interesting to try to play with. Um, so like I said, this is what the breeder will already have her s starting using and she'll know what that is. So to not confuse her when she comes to my house, I went ahead, got the same thing. The breeder highly recommended it. And, you know, as someone with a disability and as someone who lives in a very, uh, very cold climate where we get a lot of snow, a lot of ice, um, we get temperatures minus 20, minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit that can last for weeks at a time in the winter. I want my dog to know that there is an acceptable place where it's okay to go potty in the house because maybe I can't go outside. I have balance issues. I know I also have asthma. If it's minus 30 degrees and windy and icy, it's not safe for me to go outside. So if I can't walk the puppy, I want her to know it's perfectly acceptable to go in the puppy box. Now we'll do more, we'll do rewarding for going potty outside because the eventual goal is to go potty outside whenever that's an option. And the box is only for when you can't hold it until then. Um, but that certainly the box, using the box is not a negative. It's not doing something wrong. It's not making a mistake. It's not like you don't make any sort of big deal about it. So yes, my, my older dog understands this concept. He goes outside and does his business 99% of the time. Since the age of about 13, when he started having some accidents in the house, he just couldn't always hold it overnight. I started when, like I said, when he was about 13. I started to put a puppy training pad down in the living room and sure enough maybe once or twice a week during the night he uses the training pad and I don't treat it like he had an accident because it's not an accident it's an okay place for him to go if he needs to go in you know during the night I find that preferable to him either being in pain because he's trying not to go or him having an accident on the carpet because he can't hold it um, he's 15 years old he shouldn't have to stress that. Same thing with a puppy. I don't want our relationship, you know, the dog to feel like it's making mistakes because it's very young bladder, can't hold it long enough. Um, or like I said, the weather conditions just aren't good or safe for us to be going out. I'm not going to take a tiny puppy out in, you know, if we just are in the middle of a blizzard and there's three feet of snow. I want her to know it's acceptable and perfectly okay to use the litter box. So, that's that. There's the scoop. Not very exciting. Uh, I didn't mean there's the scoop like that's the story. I meant literally. That is the scoop that goes with the litter box. Okay, what else do I have here? For those accidents, which as much as we may try, they will occasionally happen because we are human and we don't always remember to walk our dog as often as we should or we don't always keep an eye on it as closely as we should when it's somewhere that an accident could happen. You definitely want to go with an enzyme-based uh, stain and odor remover because there are plenty of like carpet cleaners that will get rid of the stain and to our human noses will get rid of the odor, not that we don't smell it anymore, but to a dog's much more sensitive nose, it will still pick up that residual scent of urine, which will tell it this is the place to go potty. So you something like Nature's Miracle works on a really deep level to break down the chemicals of the urine so that it does not have any urine smell whatsoever even to the dog and that way you're not reinforcing that that's the place that she should go. So accidents get cleaned up with something like this and again either your puppy pad, you're going outdoors, or your litter box then remains in the dog's mind the preferred place that it should be going. What else do we have here? Um, I will be clicker training uh, slash using a marking word. I'll be using the word yes. A clicker, if you're not familiar, clicker training is very common. You do it the second your dog does the behavior you want. 
because they say uh, from, you know, dog psychology studies, you literally have about a second to a second and a half before the dog doesn't make a connection between the action and your reaction to it. In other words, the reward. So, for example, if you're asking the puppy to sit, the second its butt hits the floor, yes. That way, the couple seconds it takes you to get the treat out of your pocket or your little training pouch and hand it to them, during those three or four seconds, they haven't forgotten what they're being rewarded for. They very quickly learn to connect that hearing that clicker or hearing that word means I did something right and a reward is coming. It just speeds up the learning process because just say, okay, the dog sat and it takes you a few seconds to get the treat. In the meantime, the dog sat, the dog looked around, the dog maybe sniffed its foot. You hand it the treat, it doesn't know which of those behaviors it's being rewarded for. So marking the behavior the second it happens, whether that's with a clicker or a, a word or both, just in case you don't always have a clicker with you. I got a three pack of them. They're on a little thing that you can put on your wrist or you could clip, it has a clip, you could clip it to your leash. Uh, I can stick one on my son <laughs> so that if he's around, my son is 18. Please don't think I'm sticking this to a, a, a young child. Uh, so that if he's playing with her, he can click and reward good behavior. The faster you teach your puppy what you want, the faster it will want to do that behavior because it wants to make you happy and it wants to get a reward. Rather, whether the reward is food or affection or playtime, but it's important that you help it understand as quickly as possible what behavior it is that's getting the reward. So yes, three pack of clickers was about six dollars and to me that's money well spent. You can also just go ahead, you know, just use that word. Like in my case I'm going to be using the word yes. You can pick a different word, but you use it the second the dog does the right thing. So got three of those. What will I be using as training treats? One of the trainers that I like to watch on YouTube uh, had suggested Pupford brand. You can see it up there. Uh, Pupford, they have a website. Now these are freeze dried and they're just very simple, low calorie, not chemical filled, you know, like your standard like dog biscuit kind of thing that's got all sorts of byproducts and stuff. These, this package is sweet potato, these three packages, we've got uh, freeze-dried beef liver, they're all freeze-dried. Uh, this one's salmon, and this one is chicken. Now they're in tiny little pieces. If you look through that little sort of window in the package, you can see the individual pieces are probably about the size of a pencil eraser, and they're about a calorie each. So you can very generously reward your puppy every time it's doing, you know, the behavior that you want to see without worrying that you're giving too many calories. The problem with using those bigger treats or high calorie foods is, first of all, you wanna make sure that you're feeding your puppy something really healthy. Uh, fewer ingredients, the better. But also, you might be giving way too many calories and that's not healthy. You wanna keep your puppy at a healthy weight. Next, um, I got, just a simple rope chew toy for when that teething starts to kick in. Um, it's good for chewing and it's also good for a little bit of tug of war, you know, so it's something to play with in addition to something that's acceptable and okay to chew on. You want your dog to learn the things that it's okay to chew on um, and the things that it's okay to, you know, you're going to play with them with. That makes the thing more fun. You add value to the thing by making it fun. So rope is good. It helps clean their teeth as they chew also because, you know, the, the teeth kind of slide between the, the fibers of the rope. And having never personally chewed on a rope, I'll have to take the word of the experts who say that dogs find it to be a gratifying texture to teeth on. I plan on getting her some other uh, teething type toys uh, and other more for just playing and training with toys, like, you know, squeaky toys and stuff that I would not leave her to teeth on, but that I would use to keep her engaged while we're doing our playing 
playing and training are very much the same thing, especially at the beginning. Training is supposed to be fun and positive and a bonding experience, so it should have a playful element to it. And you want to have special toys that your dog really loves, and the only time they'll see those toys are when they're spending time with you. Next in here, we have a very long, about 20 foot long leash. It's just a lightweight nylon leash with your standard clip on it. And this is so either indoors or out, your puppy can have a little more running around. You can be playing with a toy outside, maybe tossing it a little bit, letting them run around. But they're still on a leash. They can't run out into the street. They can't run away from you out you know, towards somebody else's property or dog or other animal, um, even in the house. This way they can't, if someone opens the front door, they can't run out. Um, it's always a good idea to make sure that you have control of where your puppy goes, especially at the beginning, when it has zero clue about what's dangerous in the world. It is up to you to make sure it's safe. Um, you know, when, when your puppy's not in its crate slash playpen area and it's with you, you need to have eyes on and be paying attention to the environment. And having a nice long lead for, for playing and letting your puppy get some exercise is great. Now, this is not what you're going to use when you're working on your walking on a leash skills, but it's going to be a little while before we're ready to really try to firm up walking on a leash skills. She has to get a little older. In the meantime, just staying with me and walking near me will be rewarded. Making eye contact will be rewarded. You know, looking up when I say her name will be rewarded. These are all bonding things that you want to teach, engagement things you want to teach right away. So long lead, important to have. This was a free gift that came uh, with my purchase. Probably familiar with them. It is just a collapsible bowl. So if you're traveling, you know, road trip or even out for a long walk where you might be carrying a water bottle, you can just give your dogs a little food or water in this and then, you know, flatten it and clip it back on the side of the crate or your leash or wherever you're keeping it, depending on whether you're on a car trip or just out for a particularly long walk where you know that you're going to have to stop and give your dog a drink. Um... Next, here are the three clickers, uh, grooming supplies that I got. Let me move back to stuff I've already showed you. Grooming supplies that I got. Oh, I'm getting a standard poodle. They don't shed. Their hair, you know, their hair is like our hair. Some might come out when you brush it, but we don't shed. Our whole coat, our whole coat doesn't come out, you know, seasonally. Um, so poodles have to get haircuts or else their hair would just get longer and longer and longer and tangled and matted and so I've already found being the like I said I'm as bad as I was the first time I was pregnant with an actual human child so I already know what vet I'm going to use I'm going to use the vet that, that Jay goes to I'm very happy with them but I have already figured out what groomer I'm going to use because I did grow up with two miniature poodles. Much smaller poodles, but same hair, and they do require, in my opinion, professional grooming unless you are a really skilled groomer. Now, even with professional grooming every six to eight weeks, they still need to be brushed at home, preferably every day or every other day. Certainly at the beginning, I want to do it every day, even if it's just for five minutes, just to reward her for letting me touch her with the brush, even if I'm not even really brushing. Just letting me touch her with the brush, I will reward her so that, she, you know, positive association with the brush. I got a slicker brush, um, which has these sort of metal tines. I know that looks very harsh. You don't rub that against the dog's skin. This is, you know, it will help with the surface of the coat, and it will also help to just kind of get, assuming there aren't big knots, it'll help to straighten the curls so that they don't turn into knots. I like this particular one because just say I've brushed my dog and there's some hair stuck in there, which can be a pain to get out because as you can see, these, these little bristles are really tightly packed together. 
you just push this and then that plastic bit comes forward and will just push the hair off for you. So you don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning the brush. Additionally, I got a comb because after you do the brush, and as you're doing the brush, you're gonna find some tangles. Now you can see that the longer, uh, you know, like the ends, the teeth are spread further apart. So you can use that to try to work out the, the tangles, try to get them broken up. And then once you think you have all your tangles out, you should be able to, with the closer teeth, you should be able to go right down to the skin and comb the whole length of the hair and have no tangles then you know your dog has been thoroughly brushed and you want to keep them from getting tangles in between visits to the groomer. Next, let's talk about paws. Personally, even though I've had dogs my whole life, I hate clipping their, their, their paws, their nails. I hate it. I always worry that if they move while I'm doing it, then I'm going to cut it too short, then I'm going to make them bleed, then I'm going to hurt them. I hate doing it. I went with one of these, uh, the ones that basically you grind it down and this I just plan on initially getting her used to it, getting her used to the sound of it, getting her used to the fact that it kind of vibrates, it tick might tickle her feet a little bit. Um, and again, I'll reward her just for being calm while she listens to the noise of it. I'll reward her for being calm if I touch her with it, I'll, you know, up until we get up to the point of actually her letting me successfully, hopefully, grind her nails down a little bit on a regular basis so that they don't get long. The groomer will clip her nails, but again, that's every six to eight weeks. And in between, I would like to be able to manage her nails. So I think it's a good idea to get her used to something like this. Last grooming thing we have here is the, uh, the teeth. Let's remember the teeth. If you want, um, I know when I was younger, now keep in mind, I'm 52. So when I was a kid, you know, like the dog that my first dog, the dog that I don't like remember life before having Pete, Pete was a miniature poodle. And, um, my parents got him when I was like two or three. So like I said, I don't remember, I don't remember not having a dog. Um, I do not remember, remember us ever brushing his teeth. I think back we're talking now the 1970s. I don't think people really brushed their dog's teeth. He was a poodle. We brushed him. Uh, but I don't think oh, the average pet owner, I mean, probably if you were showing dogs and stuff, maybe you were brushing their teeth. But as the average pet owner, I don't really remember me or anyone else I knew for that matter. And most of my friends had dogs brushing their pet's teeth. Obviously, a lot has changed over the years. And you want to start getting your puppy used to that as early as possible. Now, I'm not going to be trying to get this big toothbrush into her mouth right away, but this little part that you kind of just slip your finger into it so that she gets the idea that you are going to be taking your finger and, you know, wanting to touch the inside of her teeth, inside of her mouth, rubbing her teeth. That helps her get used to that. You can just do a little bit of cleaning with that. And as she gets bigger and her mouth is bigger and her teeth are bigger, then you can move on to actually using the brush. It comes with like the little gel, you know, <laughs> doggy toothpaste also that is safe to use. And again, something to let her just get used to, reward her for being calm and for even letting you use it for a second so that she associates it as a good thing that, hey, if I'm relaxed and chill with this, I get treats. I get, I get, you know, told how fabulous I am. I get to play with toys. Good things happen when I'm good around this thing. Um, basically, you want to build those kind of positive associations around any sort of grooming or training item. So that's where I'm at so far. Uh, I still have quite a while. Um, litter is due end of November. At six weeks, I get to go, like I said, I have first pick of the females. So at six weeks, I get to go meet the female puppies. I hope there's a good number of female puppies because I really want to have that like feeling of, yes, that one's my dog. Like, you know, sometimes you just instantly know. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping I have that. Like when I look at them, one of them just jumps out at me as like, there's no question. I know that's the one. So um, 
I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, that it's like that. And then three weeks later at nine weeks is when I will actually be able to bring her home. By then I should have made myself completely crazy. Uh, my upstairs of my house should look completely different than it looks now. <laughs> I've been working on it and it's already like, I would say maybe like a third of the way there to what I'm envisioning wanting it like. But still got quite a bit to do, including moving heavy furniture and stuff, which I'm going to have to get someone to help me with. But um, yeah, I'm so excited, so excited. And I will keep you filled in. And I would appreciate if you have any, wow, I got this particular thing and it made my life so much easier when I got my new puppy. If you can think of anything that helped you when you brought your puppy home, please put it in the comments and let me know so that I can check those things out. Um, I did just order and I did not get yet. It's supposed to be a pheromone type spray that apparently is a calming scent to dogs. From the reviews I read, you can like in the car, you can spray it in their crate or you can spray it like say on a bandana or on their dog bed that you just leave in the crate or around them and the scent is supposed to be soothing. It actually even comes like in a, you know, like, like an air freshener plug-in like you'd use in your house that you plug it in and it's good for a month and then you put in a refill. This thing comes in one of those. So I ordered the plug-in version. So I figured for the first month, to keep the area where I'm trying to get her used to her crate and used to sleeping. If this does in fact, like the reviews say, help the dog feel relaxed and calm, I want her to feel relaxed and calm when she's in her crate. Um, and then also I bought the spray version for putting on things when you're traveling. So I don't have those yet to show you as I get more stuff, which I told you I'm being like a crazy mama. I'm sure I will be getting more stuff and I will be making more videos. But please do let me know if you have any items that you would strongly recommend that were great for you and your dog or puppy when you first got them home. Also, if you haven't already, please take a moment, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I have a new video. And as always, and I do say this from the heart, I appreciate you taking the time and thank you for watching. Have a great day.